Hi everyone, it's me, Eden from Lemon Nerdy. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be adding on to the piano game that we made a while back, and by the end of this tutorial, you will be able to record a song, play that song back, delete the song, and change the tempo. And to do all of that, you're gonna need three variables and a list. If you already know how those work, great. But if not, fear not, because I will be explaining all of it in this tutorial. Before we get started, I wanted to give a huge shout out to one of my best friends, Hannah, also known as you, 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 47 on scratch. She made me this beautiful friendship bracelet. She is so good at making friendship bracelets that she actually made a game where you can make your own friendship bracelet on scratch. It's really complicated and really, really fun. So if you want to check that out, I will put a link down in the description to where you can play it. Now, let's get started. So here we are with our basic piano project from part one. If you didn't already watch part one, there will also be a link in the description to where you can watch it and catch up. I'm going to click on the remix button so that I still have my original project. Now in this project, all you can do is click on the different keys and they make a noise. But we want it so that whenever you click one of these keys, it'll record the note, add it to a list, and you can also choose whether you start or stop, and you can change the tempo and play and delete your song. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is make the recording and stop recording buttons. Let's paint a new sprite. And I'm just going to choose the circle tool and make a little red circle. And I'll put that up in the corner. Then I will make a orange square. An orange square usually signals to stop recording. So I think that people will recognize that pretty easily. There we go. And I'll put that right next to my recording button. So, to track whether it is recording or not, when you click the recording button, it should start recording. And if you click the stop recording button, it should stop. And to track that, we need a variable. Now, a variable is basically just something that stores information. It can be words, it can mean numbers, or it could be a Boolean, which is true or false, but we'll get into that in another video. In this video, we will only be using variables that store numbers or words. For the recording function, we will need a variable that stores words. So let's make a variable and we're going to call it recording with a question mark. And then when this sprite is clicked, we want when this sprite is clicked, since we're in the stop button, when this sprite is clicked, we want it to set recording to no. Let's get when this sprite is clicked. And then at the beginning, we'll also want it to set recording to no since we don't want it to be recording off the bat. Now let's go into our recording button. And then when this sprite is clicked, it will set recording to yes. Let's test that out. So when the start is clicked, recording is set to no. Then if I click here, it changes to yes. And if I click here, it changes to no again. Perfect. Now we need to make our piano keys able to sense that. And if the recording, and if it is recording, then it will record whichever note that they just played. Let's start in our first piano key. To track all of the notes that you play, we need to make a list. We're going to we're going to name this list your song. Over here you can see that the note that you're playing is tracked by a number, and this is the number 60. If we look at another key, that note is number 62. So each note has a unique number assigned to it. And when we click on this, we want to have that note added to this list. So we'll have a list of all of the notes in our song. To do that, we'll get an add block. 
we also need an if block because we only want it to add to the list if you're recording. So let's go to operators and get an equals operator, then go back to variables and get recording. So if recording equals yes, then add 60 to your song. Let's test it out. So right now we're not recording. So if I click on this, it's not adding to my song. But if I click on the recording button, it's adding that to my song. Perfect. Now we need to now we need to copy this into all of our other keys, including the black ones, so that it will record, so that we'll record for every key. You can do this by dragging it into another one. In our next key, right here, this is note 62. So we're gonna change this to add 62 to your song. Repeat this process for all of your keys. Now we have it so that every key will add their unique note to the list. Let's just make sure that at the beginning, it will delete all of your song so that you can start with a fresh slate. Let's test it out. So our song is empty. If we click on these keys, nothing's happening. But if we record, Then I have my song made by the unique note codes in the piano. Now we are going to play this song back using the play function that we are about to make. So let's make a new sprite. And this is going to be our play button sprite. To make a triangle, usually I will just make a square, then use the corners tool and delete one of the corners using the backspace button. And then I will rotate it however I want. So now it looks like a play button. All right. So to make this playthrough, we're going to need to make another variable. And this variable will be called current note. The current note is going to change as it goes through the entire song. So once it plays the first note, it'll change to two, then it'll play the second note, change to three, and then so on. And we wanted to keep doing this for the length of the song, which is 20. So to do that, let's get, when this sprite is clicked, set current note to 1. Then we need a repeat block. And we want it to repeat for the length of the song. So in the list tab, you can get the length of your song. Then in the music tab, have it play this note for this amount of beats. And to get the unique note, we will go back to variables and under list, get item and not item number one, we want the item of the current note since the current note is gonna change after the note is played. So we'll put current note in that space. And this is where the tempo variable that we're about to make later is going to go, but we'll get to that later. Then once it plays this note, it will change current note by one. Let's test it out. So I'm going to record a new song. And let's play it back. Nice. Now let's add another button so that you can delete the song. For this button, I'll just make a square and then use the text tool in black and type in delete song. 
make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And this is just one simple script. When this sprite is clicked, then delete all of your song. There we go. The last feature that we're gonna add is the tempo feature. To do that, let's make some up and down arrows. Again, to make my triangles, I'm gonna make a square, use the corners tool, delete one corner using backspace. and then place it where I want. We'll need a new variable for the tempo called your song tempo. And we do not want this variable to hide, but we do want to hide the current note variable. You can decide whether or not you want to keep the recording on. Some people might find it helpful just to know when they're recording and when they're not. At the beginning, we'll want the tempo to be at the default, which is 0.25. Then if they want to make it faster, then when this sprite is clicked, then we'll change it by negative 0.05. When it takes away time in between, that will make it so that there is less time in between each note, which will make it faster. So when there's, so when there's more time between each note, it'll make it slower. So let's duplicate that to make the down arrow. And we'll just take away the negative sign so it will add time in between each note. Let's go into our costumes, select it, and flip vertical. Then move it to underneath your song tempo. Let's go into the play button, go to variables, and then where it says 0 0.25 beats, put in the your song tempo variable. Instead, let's try everything out in full screen. So right now, my song tempo is 0 0.25. So my song is empty because I was not recording. Now, if I play the scale, I have my list of my song here, and if I stop it and play it back, there's my song, and I can make it go faster. Oh, looks like we have a bug. So let's go into our up arrow, and aha, so we used the wrong variable. Let's change this to your song tempo. and then it should work. There we go. Now if I play it, it goes faster. And if I do this, it goes much slower. Before you share it, make sure that you close the your song list so that the user cannot see what their song is in the list because they probably don't want to see it. All right, and make sure that you save your project so that you don't lose your work. And that's it. You are all done. Great job. Make sure that you all like and subscribe so you don't miss my next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.